All right, last step is actually taking the data tables that you downloaded and joining them to a geography so that they can be analyzed, visible, ready to map, and ready to use in the GIS. So first step is downloading some spatial data that we can use to join your tables to. And so inside of ArcGIS Pro right now, I'm looking at US um, counties, which I downloaded from the Tiger website. So the US Census Bureau has a website where they provide shape files, which is a GIS data format. And I can go here and grab the data for a specific year. Great tip, some of these boundaries change when there is a um, reapportionment or you know every 10 years or so, they can redraw some of these boundaries. So if you downloaded data for 2000, go and download the same shapefile or boundary data for that year. So I downloaded data for 2022. And so I selected 2022 and I'm gonna come down here and do this from the web interface. Select that, change it to my year, and then select the geography that I need. Again, I needed um, counties, which are here. And just to show this, if I needed block groups or blocks and hit submit, I would then need to go and grab it for the specific state. So pretty easy. And for counties, at least, it's just one big national file. So I'll hit submit and then download the file. When that download finishes, you will end up with a folder that looks something like this with a bunch of additional files and it looks pretty confusing. So this is called a shape file. It's basically a bunch of different files that are stored here that store the information, projection, the data set, etc. And when you look at them with the GIS, it sees them as one file. So after that folder downloads and you unzip it, there's no need to come in here. So as I go to ArcGIS Pro, I'll just show this example. If I go hit add data and I come to my downloads, let's find down here, I've got that county folder so I can double click on that. And you can see this is recognizing and is just this one file. So that's what I just added into the map and hit close. So this file right now is visualized in pink, which is fine. But what we really care about is the underlying data and attributes that are here. So I'm going to right click on this and go to the open the attribute table. I'm going to expand this up a little bit. You can also zoom in on it to make it a little bit bigger. So the field that I care about that's listed here is this one called geo ID. And that's the one we're going to be able to use to join our other data set with. But I want you to note one thing here. So as I hover over this, it's telling me the type of field this is. It's telling me it's a text, text field. So that's going to be very important in a couple minutes, and I'll show you why. Let's next add our data in from the CSV that we cleaned up. And I'll add in my data, hit OK. And let's go open up and look at this table. Go open and visualize that. And when we're looking at this, you can see we've got our old GeoID field, which is a text field. We have this one, which has just come in as a long field. So that is going to be an issue. And I'm going to show us how we can kind of clean that up and make sure that the field types match. Because when we're trying to join information, it's looking if it's text and text, those field types need to match. Or if it's an integer and an integer, need to make sure they're the same because it won't take a text field and an integer field and be able to match them together. And also our format is currently wrong with this field. So we need to update that so we have the right view for what this data set should look like. So first, let's make sure there's a leading zero on that. This should be five digits long. 
And so for that, the first thing I can do is right click here and I'm going to go to data design fields. And now I want to change the number format for that data set. So here's my GeoID. I'm going to double click this for the number format. Instead of a category, I want to be custom. And we want this to be five digits long. So one, two, three, four, five, and hit OK. I'm going to hit Save. And now if I go back to my data set, it refreshed and now I have a leading zero on the front of that. So let's double check. This is a numeric field. So this is saying this is a long, has five digits, looking good. Let's go to our US counties. So we have right now our GeoID, five digits, but it's text. So we need to now make a new column in here of this same GeoID, but make it a long or an integer. And one thing I will drop in as well that is very helpful to go and read about, and this is something I want you to kind of take a look at, are the different type of fields that it's possible to store information. This is a really important and kind of critical part of GIS and really any kind of databases. So in here, you can see if I'm going to go ahead and add a field, I have all of these different options for the types of different fields that I could create. And all of these control the amount of information and the types of data that can get stored in those fields. And that is really important from the end user side. Let's say I'm trying to make a map that is showing how things have changed um, over time. I'm going to want to ensure that I'm making you know, a date only field or a time field. Let's see if I'm making a map that has, you know, a description field with, you know, a, a paragraph that describes the location. I'd want to ensure that I'm using a text field or maybe I need decimal places or I don't want decimal places. So all of those, the data types control the kind of information that you can store. And so on this, I need to go ahead and add a new field so I can do that just right from the top. I'm going to say add field. This gives me a list of all of the different fields that are in the data set right now. It shows me their data types right here. So a lot of them are text. A few are double. And for this new one, I'm going to call this GeoID2 for the field name. An alias is the name that the end user can kind of see, which I'm going to give it the same name and call it long. This is green right here to show me it hasn't been saved yet. So I'm going to save that change. And now if I go back to my US counties, I'm going to have that new field data set at the far right hand side here. You can see it's just populated with zero, so it has no values yet. If I right click on this, there's a tool called calculate field, which lets you take values from any other field perform functions, calculations, do arithmetic or math, and we need to do a really simple one for this initial field calculation. All we're going to do is just copy the values from one field to another. This is a really powerful tool we'll dive into a bit later. For right now, we're just doing a little bit of data cleanup with it. So what kind of language do I want to use? We're going to use Python. And then all I need to do, I'm going to clear out this, it's telling me what is this new column the value is going to equal. There's an additional code block down here. We'll get into some examples later on. But all I need to do is make sure this GeoID2 is selected and then go and double click GeoID. So it's going to take the value from this field and put it into this field. I always recommend hitting this little verify button. It says expression is valid. Obviously, in this case, it's a pretty simple expression, but it's always nice to just test and make sure it's going to work. And then I can hit apply or OK. I'm going to hit apply. And then close out this dialog. And so here we've got the same values coming back for the GeoID and it dropped those leading zeros again. So we need to do the same thing that we did before. So if I come to my fields view for that county data set, click on numeric, change this from numeric to custom, and 
put in five zeros. It's just telling me the format of this data set has five placeholders. And I hit OK. Hit Save. And now let's come back to our counties. And we should see all of these now with that leading zero there. So it's representing kind of five places. If I mouse over this, it's telling me it's a long field. Good to go. And let's go look at our other data set. Mouse over this. Also a long field. So as I mentioned, I can now match those two data sets up. Now I can come over to the county and I'm going to right click this and I'm going to add what's called a join. A join is simply saying I want to take this data set and match it up to another data set. So what is my input table? What am I starting with? What is the field I want to use? You can see it already populated this for me because it's kind of looking for maybe matching data sets. So I wanted to use that GeoID2. Make sure you don't use your initial ones. You'll get an error. I know some of you will accidentally do that and that's okay. Make sure you use the new field you created. GeoID2, go to my table. And what field do I want to use? use my GeoID2. Do I want to keep all the records? And let's validate. And let me scroll down. And this is really important to just be able to test. It's saying a join has matched 10 records. So the input table has 3,235. The join table has 10. Your number might be different if you picked a different state or different location, and that's fine. It's just saying that it was able to match from my Arizona table 10 records that match the Census Bureau county records. I'm going to say keep all of the input records and I'm going to hit OK. And it doesn't look like anything new has happened. So if I close those tables, we have our same data set, but now, if I click on the map, specifically in Arizona, and if I scroll over here on the right-hand side, you can see now I have all of these values that are coming in for that county. And these are those coded values, which again, could be a little confusing, but we have our kind of column metadata that you can go back to and get an understanding for what those records and what those values actually mean. So let's take one for example. Here's the SM, this B18120003E is showing me the estimate, the total estimate of folks employed in the labor force. So that's a number we want. So employed in the labor force, 18120.03e. If you want to, you can come back here and you can actually go to that fields view and we could change the alias for some of these to ensure we know what that actually means. So here it's telling me, here's that 18120.003e can double click and I already forgot what it was. So total in the labor force employed. And I'm going to hit save. And so this isn't going to be the best map, but it's going to be just a quick example of how you can kind of use this. So we just saved that so I know what that field is, close that, and now if I wanted to, I could use any of those values inside of a map. So here I just right clicked, hit symbology, and I want to use a single symbol or I want to use unique values. And in this case, we want to do graduated colors. So we want to use that you know, total in the workforce number and look at a map that'll make you know low numbers a certain color and high numbers a certain color. 
So area of land, I don't want to use that. And here now in my drop down, instead of that code, you can see I actually get the value returned to me. I'm going to select that. And we have a pretty nice start where we can at least validate that that data got pushed into our map. We're able to see it. We're able to use it. And we could start updating some of those other codes. So this is a great workflow for understanding data types, the ways you need to clean information and data, and then also starting to get it prepped, um, like in this case, to make it more human readable. So we could go through and start updating all of these codes if we wanted to, to put aliases on the data set. But for this, we just wanted to make sure we could get this information prepped and ready that we can do the next steps of analyses and visualization with it.